Now, today, um, a report was published from Parliament called The Conduct of Mr John Burke. Um, it's an 89-page report on the bullying allegations that the former Speaker uh, has faced over the last few years. And its conclusions are that he is a serial liar and a multiple bully. Now, John Burko joins me in the studio. Good it's not very you. comfortable reading that sort of thing out when you're actually sitting there. But um, I was thinking about how to start this interview. And my colleague Eddie Mayer once started an interview with Boris Johnson by saying at the start, so this is some years ago, Mr Johnson, you're a nasty piece of work. Now, reading this report, and I have read all 89 pages, now the evidence is that you're a bit of a nasty piece of work. No, I'm not a nasty piece of work at all. I'm a warm, empathetic principled and passionate person who had fantastic, I emphasise fantastic relations, Ian, with the vast majority of people with whom I worked and interacted throughout my time as a Member of Parliament, 22 years, and in the course of my 10-year plus tenure as Speaker. There was a sprinkling of people with whom I clashed. I periodically had disagreements with people. I was overwhelmingly concerned to implement the reform agenda on which I was elected and then re-elected, re-elected and re-elected. Some people cavilled at that and dissented from it and there were clashes, but I absolutely deny that I bullied anybody in any way. And of course, such allegations in the future have to be brought within 12 months. Some of these, for which there is no video evidence, no audio evidence, no email evidence, no text evidence, well, how could they date back how could they 12 be? years. Well, indeed not. But I mean, what they were private meetings within the House of Commons. They couldn't have been recorded. No, they may not have been recorded, but there might well have been, for example, emails or texts which would be indicative of a course of conduct. There is no such thing. So the point I'm making well, well, there, there is, is actually, one person's word is, against another. There is uh, evidence because Lord Lisbane kept a diary on his computer in the House of Commons as to all of the different incidents. And he says he didn't record them all, but the ones that he did recall. And, I mean, Lord Lisbane, formerly Sir Robert Rogers, I mean, a very impressive character in many ways. Um, he, I can't see why... You could accuse somebody like him, or indeed General David Leakey, or indeed um, one or two of the others, of making it up. But that's what you're effectively doing. No, what I'm saying is that our recollections are completely different and they are massively divergent, the one from the other. You refer to a couple of people there, Ian, perfectly properly. Lieutenant General David Leakey. Well, M Mr David Leakey brought a complaint against me and that complaint was investigated and it was rejected. So that is a matter of recorded well, fact, he, he's which saying was of tonight, no interest. And he's saying tonight, to and I don't know if you are aware of this, the Guardian have said that um, he's so John Burke should never again hold public office or a position of leadership, former Black Rod, General David Leakey, has said. Yes, but he's perfectly entitled to his opinion about which I'm not remotely bothered or concerned. Sorry, let's focus on the specifics, because you referred okay, to him well, let's do that. in the context of somebody who had been complaining about me, and I was just making the factual point for you and for your listeners, that David Leakey submitted a complaint about me, it was investigated, and it was rejected. In relation to Lord Disvain, you reference a diary a diary, the provenance of which is uncertain, and which may what well... What do you mean by if, that? What I mean by that is it is not known exactly when it was kept because he was asked about that diary and whether it could be reproduced. And what he indicated was that it wasn't possible to reproduce it from the computer because the computer on which it was kept was changed and he therefore no longer had but it. One of, one of your I am simply drawing attention to the fact that that is a somewhat unusual state of affairs. One of your defences uh, to the appeal panel was that you tried to claim that you weren't even covered by your own bullying and harassment policy. Well, that's a completely different point. That's well, a point. Well, it is a different point, but it's a perfectly valid one to bring up. It's a perfectly valid one to bring up. That's a matter appertaining, Ian, to the question of scope and that was an argument about whether given that paragraph 4.3 of the policy referred to the need for somebody who was a respondent to be a pass holder and I wasn't whether in the circumstances I was covered by the policy that was a debate that was perfectly reasonably had by me with the parliamentary standards commission do you accept now that you were covered by it well I accept that it was decided that I would be and there is a reason for that Ian which I'm sure you will have keenly focused upon but I'll happily tell you if you haven't and that is that on April the 28th last year in the 
chamber of the House of Commons, a number of amendments to the policy were proposed, including to that provision. So where it previously said that in order to be a respondent to a complaint, you had to be a pass holder, that was changed to being you don't have to be a pass holder. As a consequence of that... Well, you won't be a I pass holder in the covered. future, will you? Well, well I have never decided. applied for a parliamentary pass since I left the House. So in the end, after two years and the expenditure of exorbitant sums, probably well over £100,000 of public money, what has been decided is that I should not be awarded that which I have not sought and do not want, namely a parliamentary pass. Let, let me quote something from the report. It says the bullying and harassment policy was breached repeatedly and extensively by the most senior member of the House of Commons. 21 separate allegations were proved and have been upheld. He had little or no insight into the way that he behaved or its consequences. Had he still been a Member of Parliament, we would have determined that he should have been expelled by a resolution of the House. Now, first of all, do you understand that the way you behave affects people in a negative way? Because if you don't understand that, how can you understand what the word bullying means? I can understand that a person can affect another person negatively. The issue is about specifics, as I'm sure you would readily accept. These complaints were distilled and synthesised into a series of specific allegations. And my argument is this. First of all, hearsay was frequently preferred over the direct testimony of people present in the room. That's a very serious matter, and in my view, a violation of natural justice. Secondly, all of the allegations relate to the first part of my speakership when I was driving through a comprehensive reform programme to which some people were opposed. And thirdly, I think it's a fair point to make that the procedure is changing next month so that instead of people being able to be scrutinised and investigated for matters 12 years ago, they will in fact have to have complaints well, made about them within 12 you, months. You were investigated on, under the rules No, the uh, I'm sorry, Ian. I think it's a very fair point for me to make. Well, you've made it. The standard by which I was judged was a standard that has been subject to much criticism because of the danger of faded memories and disappeared evidence and absence of witness testimony and people not remembering things. And in future, none of my former parliamentary colleagues will be subject to that procedure. So the procedure is being changed just after me. Some people with a fair mind might think that that's a little little bit fishy. Was your treatment of Andrea Leadsom bullying? No. You called her a bloody stupid woman? No, I didn't call her a bloody stupid woman. Sorry, Ian. Well, she says you do. Ah, so she says I did, so mm. that's proof, is it? Well, why would she make that allegation? You think she made it up? It may be, as she claimed, she never said who told her, that she was told of it, but I didn't say it, and no evidence has ever what been What did you say then? Because you must have said something. I don't think people make these things up. Well, this they? was three and a half years ago. I think, no, uh, forgive me, I think it's probably nearer to four years ago. I don't remember precisely. I think it was 2018. But I certainly didn't call her a bloody stupid woman. I most certainly But your didn't. attitude to her and was so, as if you thought that anyway, wasn't it? Because well, we, no, we saw I, that in the Commons on several occasions. And you see, the thing is, when you deny that you are a bully, we've seen it happen in the Commons to no. her, to Nadine Doris, to plenty no, of other I'm sorry, MPs. Ian, I'm, I've seen it myself. No, I'm sorry, and I'm afraid the thesis doesn't work. And I'll tell you in all politeness and courtesy why it doesn't work. You are extrapolating from the high octane and frequently high decibel level exchanges in the Chamber of the House of Commons to what might have happened in a wholly different fora. I remember the Reverend Rose Hudson Wilkin once being in conversation with me and she said people had occasionally suggested in the public square that because I barked at people in the chamber that was proof of bullying to which her response was no if people behave like children they must expect to be treated like children when there's a cacophony in the chamber as I'm sure you would have understood if you were serving as speaker, Ian, I couldn't stand there well, and there's say, no need to would the honourable... No, no, it's not a question of being... Me. It's not a question of being patronising, it's a question of being factual. If I was sitting there, or indeed standing up, I couldn't very well say to somebody making an enormous noise or a large number of people making a cacophony, no. would you perhaps just possibly were, consider would you, quietening down? Would you accept that, would that be there ridiculous. were certain MPs that you picked on? No. Well, I could, I could come up with a list of quite a lot who think that you did. Simon Burns, Keith Simpson, a lot of the, the, the awkward squad in the corner. Um, 
and they would i think they would have regarded it as bullying and you in, well they never in said your, so. in your reaction to this report you don't show any contrition at all you don't think you've done anything wrong do you I don't think that I breached the bullying and harassment policy. I think in case after case after case after case, there was either no witness present or the witness evidence was extremely well, what, what mixed. About the case of, so what, about, what about the case of Kate Ems? For that which Kate I Ems, who I, I think was your Speaker's secretary um, for about a, a year or just over... No, actually for eight months. Eight months, yeah. OK. Thank you. Um, she accuses you of losing your temper and smashing a mobile phone onto the desk, which broke into pieces, yeah. um, a lot of which hit her. That's not true. It's not true. No, that that not didn't true. happen. No, it didn't. I have never thrown a mobile why, phone. Why would she make office. that up? I don't know why that was said. What I can say to you is a factual point, Ian, and I know you've closely read the report, and it's this. There were two suggestions that I threw a mobile phone on different occasions. In respect of both of those alleged instances, the witnesses supposedly present were asked about those matters and they did not, I repeat for your listeners, they did not corroborate the allegation. So when you say I threw a phone and it well, broke into a large number of pieces, the answer is this the people there... That you did. No, no, but forgive me, the people there who were asked by the investigators did not, repeat, did not, repeat, did not, confirm the allegation. So the panel can say what it likes, but what it's doing is making you, a judgment you, in contravention you see, what, of the witness. What happens evidence. in a case like this is, first of all, you deny the bullying, you then blame the victims, then you smear the investigators, no. and you minimise it all through what about her. That's what no, you've done no, throughout I'm the course sorry. of the day, isn't oh, it? Oh dear, that's a below what you can do, Ian. Sorry, well, but it really what, is below what you, what you are doing. Do. You, a, you've no, thrown into doubt the independence it's of the not. expert panel, have you not? Ian, yes, I have yeah, thrown exactly. into doubt its independence. You, you, you smear the victims as no, it's liars. Not, no, it's not. No, I did, where yes, did I say have, that? Well, you just said Kate Ems hasn't told the no, truth. No, what I, what I say to you is this. Our recollections are absolutely and diametrically different. I haven't used the language of liar or not liar. I'm not getting into that. What I'm saying is a calm, cool, collected fact actual point that witnesses were identified by the complainants in respect of those allegations and the witnesses who were said to be there said no I do not corroborate that like another instance sorry Ian but another instance in which one of the complainants it's not about personalities it's about the issues but another complainant that said moment. that might not have. in July 2009, I had sworn at him, and he said it was in a private meeting, but that he'd immediately told someone afterwards. That person was tracked down and interviewed, a former press officer in the service of the house that neither of us had seen for many years, and she said she had no recollection of it. She was shown his diary note, and she said, no, I still have no recollection of it. So, in other words, the witness okay. was asked and no, said no. Okay. No, it's fair enough for you to put anyway. these points. Why aren't more people coming out in your defence today? Because you had a lot of fans when you were Speaker. Not many Conservatives, it hasn't... Well, there were some, but not, not <laughs> most of them were on the, you other, yourself the other side of the house. you yourself were not always unsympathetic, Ian. Uh, I think some of your reform agenda was actually very laudable but um i would have expected people to maybe have come out in your defense today and they haven't and indeed you've been suspended by the labor party as well i understand that you were thinking of running for mayor of london no that's absolutely Is untrue it? absolutely no true you shouldn't believe everything you read in the daily i said Telegram. i understand yes we well, i necessarily your believe, understanding but, yeah, was, i'm giving you the opportunity to correct the your record understanding but was are you disappointed was that, that more people haven't come out in your defense i've not really been spending the day reflecting on that i think people are overwhelmingly focused on other and much bigger matters i'm not not going to sit here in this interview and comment on how many people did or didn't speak up. I've had all sorts of friendly messages from people who believe in me, people who support me, people who know that I determinedly, vigorously and passionately prosecuted a reform agenda. I wasn't hunting for trophies. I was trying to deliver change. That but, was but looking, my looking and back, I fulfilled it. You, you and I both know that when you want to deliver change, you have to bring people with you. And OK, there are times when you, sure. you, you have sort of temperamental uh, arguments. I mean, I've done it, yeah. but I like to think, if I've shouted at somebody, it's happened once and, yeah. I, and I don't do it again. Yeah. The trouble is in this report, it portrays a picture of somebody who has done it, well, at least on 21 occasions, that's what they find you guilty of. Is there, can you not bring yourself to even 
give any kind of apology to the people who feel that you did bullying. Whether you think you did or not, they think you did. No, I don't think you apologise for that which you haven't done. It's certainly very regrettable if people feel bad or didn't enjoy working with me. But we do, in the end, have to come back to the specifics. And I would put it to you and to your listeners that if I am accused of staring hate-filled at someone for a prolonged period and there are nine other people in the room, those nine other people in the room should be interviewed and asked for their evidence, but they weren't. If I'm accused of blanking someone on aircraft, it's presumably legitimate for me to point out the factual correction that it was a night flight and I was asleep for so, nine hours before addressing a so conference. You, you, so I'm sorry, the specifics... You don't feel you owe any kind of apology to anybody that all of the incidents in this report are fiction. I think that they're all wrong, and I argued the toss on every point in very great detail. Yeah, but they didn't accept I your arguments. That That's right. the point. No, but what I would say to you, Ian, in response is this. I accept that the panel has a right to make a decision, but that doesn't mean that I have to accept that its decision is right. I don't. The policy is changing next month. The policy is flawed. The policy has led to a kangaroo court, but huge it's sums of kangaroo public money court. have been it's, spent. How is it a kangaroo and they were determined court? to get a finding. How is it a kangaroo court? All of the people listed as the membership of this panel are all perfectly respectable people. They didn't have an agenda here, did they? The independent expert panel doesn't retry the case. Everybody knows that in appeals. They don't retry the case. They simply ask themselves whether they think that mm. such a judgment could reasonably have been reached. And my proposition to you, in a sense here, and if you'll allow me, is twofold. First of all, the commissioner, who is not a lawyer and has no expertise in the study of bullying cases, upheld a number of allegations which the investigators had not upheld and didn't even interview okay. me. That's not right. That's very odd. And as far as the panel is concerned, the panel may make ad hominem personal attacks on me, but offer no evidence to support the thesis. These are perfectly reasonable points for me to make. I don't bear any of the complainants' ill will. I wish them all the best, but I'm not going to go in for the business, a la Pretty Patel, of faux apologies, of saying, oh, well, I didn't think I was bullying, but if people are upset, okay. then I'm frightfully sorry. I stand by my position, and people will have to take me or leave me. But I've always been honest, and I remain honest, and I'm going to continue to be honest. We could come on for a very long time. We've gone way over the time that we said we were going to do the interview. I hope you don't mind that. Thank you very much indeed to Ian, John. thank you. Okay. Thank uh, you. Cross question at 8 o'clock, 0345 6060 973.